So far, we have defined how to represent a single invader in our game, as well as a number of invaders in our game. By the way, every time we write down a data definition, it is useful to write down some examples of data that fit that definition. This means that we can make sure that the data definition makes sense, and it's also going to make it easier for us to write down function examples later in the design process. Also, once we write down a data definition, it is possible to already write down a template for a function, any function, that processes that data definition. So here we have the template for any function that processes a posin. Because we know that a posin is a structure, we already know that the function probably needs to put together the two parts of the structure, the x and the y, in some way. Similarly, as soon as we write down what a list of posins is, we can already write down the template for any function that processes a list of posins because we know there are two kinds of list of posins. It's either empty or counts. And in the case of a counts, we're going to have a first and the rest, each of which needs to be processed by the corresponding functions. So all that can be done before we design functions that process these kinds of data concretely. Now, speaking of processing these kinds of data concretely, some of you based on these definitions, have written a function that will draw any list of invaders. The rest of you have designed a function that will move any list of invaders down each time time passes in the game. So given these definitions that y'all have designed, it is not that difficult to put together a simple animation just to have a very trivial game with only invaders and nothing else. Let's just do that to see what we have so far. We're going to use Big Bang. And as before, the most important thing about using Big Bang is to know what a world is. So let's just write down what for the time being a world is. A world is just going to be a list of posits because so far we're only going to have invaders in our game and nothing else. There's no player, no bullets, just invaders. So now we can give to Big Bang its first input, which is an initial world, in other words, an initial list of posits and initial list of invaders. Here, for example, we need some list of posits, and this is one of the places where it helps to already have a bunch of examples of list of posits standing by. So PS2 looks like a good list of posits. It has two posits in it, so this is going to be a world where there are two invaders. So let's give that to Big Bang as the initial world. And then we need to give Big Bang the two functions that y'all have designed. To draw a world, we need a function that takes a world as input and produces an image. Well, that's y'all's draw invaders. And every time time passes, we need to move all the invaders down. So we need a function that takes a world as input and produces another world. And that's the move invaders function. OK. So now we have the Big Bang, let's try it out. Oh, look, here are our two invaders. There are no bullets and no player. And so these invaders are just going down and down into the earth, passing through the earth, and doing nothing. This is the game we have so far. Great. Now, before we add more features to the game, one thing that would be nice is to have more invaders. Okay, two is a relatively small number, and it will, maybe would make sense for us to just to hand write a longer list of invaders, you know, maybe a hundred invaders or so. But it would be also more convenient if we could generate these invaders automatically, perhaps randomly. 
So let's talk for a minute about how to generate random things in the beginning student language. You might already know that there is this function in the beginning student language that we can use that will generate random numbers. So for example, this random function can take an input like 200 and it's going to give us a random number somewhat different each time between 0 and 199. So here's a bunch of random numbers. Now, this is a random number. It is not a random posin. We're going to need a random posin. A random posin is going to be made of a random x coordinate and a random y coordinate. A random x coordinate could be 1 between 0 and 199 because the background that we're playing this game on is a rectangle whose size is 200 wide and 300 tall. So the x could be random 200. The y, you might think, could be random 300. But if we make the y random 300, that means that an invader could appear at any location on the screen, even the very bottom. And that's not going to be a very fun game if the invader just pops up at the very bottom and immediately crashes into Earth and then it's game over. So instead, let's put the invaders anywhere horizontally in this rectangle, but only let's say in the top half of the uh, of the rectangle. So the x can be between zero and one ninety nine, but the y should be between let's say zero and one forty nine. In other words, only random one fifty. That's going to be the y. So if we want to generate a random posin, we can use make posin on a random x and a random y, like that. So this is how we can generate a single random invader. And as you can see each time I run this using control up, I get a different posin. Okay, so that's how we generate a single random invader. But of course, we are going to want many of them. So it would be very nice to have a function, let's call it random invaders, that will take a number and give us that many random posits in the list. So generate that many random invaders in a list. So now we are in the second step of the design recipe. Let me finish it by writing a header. Let's write some examples just to um, clarify what we mean by it would be nice to have a function random invaders. So the idea is uh, to start with, if we say random invaders zero, then we're going to want zero random invaders in the list. That's just an empty list. And if we want, uh, let's say, just one random invader, then maybe we get this one. Who knows? So then uh, we're just going to get this random invader in a list of posits. And just to make things a little bit more interesting, what if someone wants two random invaders in a list? Well, then maybe, which one should I pick? Maybe uh, they get this one and then this one, perhaps. Okay. So I hope this helps to clarify what we mean by random invaders. And clarifying what we mean by the function's name is often the primary benefit of going through steps one through three of the design process, which we have. Now let's move on to step four, writing a template for our new function random invaders. Well, the input to random invaders is just a number. And a number is such a simple thing. As you recall, there's not much to do to write a template for a function that just takes a um, number as input. So it looks like we could just remember to use the input n in this function. But that actually makes it rather difficult to write the function itself. How are we going to use n? 
and it's just a number. Are we going to multiply it by 1.8? Are we going to divide it by 2? What, what do we do with n? Well, it helps to realize that what we have in the number, in the input, is, is not just any number. It has to be a natural number. What do I mean by that? Well, it makes sense to generate zero random invaders or two or 12 or 100, but it doesn't really make sense to generate negative five random invaders or half a random invader or, or pi random invaders, whatever that means. It doesn't mean any sense. Okay, so we realize that the input to random invaders has to be a natural number. Well, how does that help? A natural number is something that we have a more detailed data definition for. Do you remember what a natural number is? Let me remind you, a natural number is actually one of two things. It could either be zero or it could be one plus another natural number. This is much more information about a natural number than we have about what a number is. And that means that we could write a template for a function that processes a natural number that's also more detailed. So let me call this process natural number, not a short name for now. Because there are two kinds of natural numbers, the template is going to have a comp with two cases in it. In the first case, we're going to see if the natural number is zero, in which case we're going to do something special for that case. If the natural number is not zero, then we know it's going to be one plus another natural number. So let's get that number out by subtracting one. And remember, that is another natural number. So let's make sure to process it. OK, that's a very detailed template. And it's going to help us a lot when we actually get to writing the definition of random invaders, the function we're working on. So instead of this not very helpful, very simple, inventory only template for a function that takes a number as input, I'm going to replace it by a template for a function that processes a natural number. When we use a template to design a function, remember to rename the names of the template, all occurrences of that name to the function we're working on. So process natural number becomes random invaders. And here too, and that's important. Okay. So now we need to fill in the template. We're in step five of designing random invaders. When n is zero, what should we return? Well, this example, which is for n being zero, reminds us that the answer should be empty. So I'm just going to copy it and use it to fill in the template. What about if n is not zero? Well, then we need to generate a random invader. But we have a little bit of help here because what is random invaders minus n line going to do? According to the purpose statement of this function that we are using, random invaders, we're going to generate that many random invaders in the list. So this is going to generate a minus one random invaders in the list because that many is a minus one. So this is a minus one random invaders in the list. For example, if n is one, then it's zero invaders in the list. If n is two, then it's one random invader in the list, and so on. So if we already have n minus one random invaders in the list, then all we need to do to get n invaders in the list is to add one more random invader. So that's what we're going to do. First, let's write down how to generate a random invader. Do you remember how to do that? Here's how we do that. Okay. So this is one random invader, and this is n minus one random invaders. And to put these together, we can just use comps. All right, that looks good. You see how much having a template for processing a natural number helps us write this function? It's actually helpful for any function that processes a natural number. Now we're ready to test this function. But before I test this function, first let me comment out 
the Big Bang that we wrote earlier because I don't really want to deal with an animation anytime I want to um, test this new function. So now I'm going to run. Hmm. Look what happened. I have some failing tests. Hmm. Let's read the test failures. It's complaining about some differences. In one of the tests, this one, we said the function should return. We expect it to return a list that just has this pause in it, 4913. Okay. But instead, we got 733. Oh, well, that's, that's also correct because that's just another random invader, another random posit. We just got a different random posit than the one we copied in the first place. I mean, that's not a big deal because after all, the, the whole point of this function is to generate random posits, which are going to be different each time. Okay, And the second test failure is actually similar. So in this test, we said we want two posits, namely these, but instead of these random posits, we got those random posits. Well, big deal. It's random. But it does mean that we're having trouble with writing tests. Because how do you test a function that returns random results? We shouldn't, and we can't, as you've seen, just put one possible result as the expected output, because that possible result is probably not going to match the actual random result that each run of the function produces. So instead of check expect, here is how you automatically test a function that uses randomness. Use check random instead. What check random does is it actually tries to make sure that the random outputs produced by each run of the function match the random expected output that we produce. So instead of just putting 49 and 13, we actually have to use the word random to write down the expected output of the function. And check random is going to try to match up the uses of random in the run of the actual function against the uses of random used to express the expected output of the function. Okay, so now let's run this again. Ah, okay, now our test pass. Great. So we have now a random invaders function, and it's it's pretty cool. You can you can use it to generate random invaders of any number. So um, we can try it on a larger number than we bothered to write tests for. Here is a list of ten random posits just like that. We can have more. We can have thirty random posits. Okay, it's a little hard to read. And we'll get to that in a minute, but I assure you these are 30 random posits. It's a little bit more interesting perhaps to use these 30 random posits to produce an animation. So let's go back to the big bag that we wrote earlier. And actually, let me move it down. And instead of using our handwritten list of two posits, ps2, as the initial world, let's use 30 random invaders. See what that does. Oh, sorry, I misspelled. There we go. 30 random invaders quietly passing through Earth, doing their own business. Not really causing much destruction, but there they are. Okay. As you've seen so far, this list of 30 invaders is pretty hard to read, and we're going to address that problem next.